Life now changes faster than ever. I struggle to keep up. In some ways, the changes are clearly good. Robots like Baxter are definitely helping grow jobs much more quickly. They take away, in many ways, the back-breaking tasks, and that allows the workers to do all the high-end jobs. That's good if the worker finds some high-end job, but what if most jobs disappear? Companies planning to replace human jobs with machines is growing. Are we looking at more job losses here? Human instinct tells us it would be better if no one ever lost a job. Politicians and unions often demand jobs be protected. But America would not be better off today if telephone operators and clerks at video stores had their jobs protected by a compassionate law. America's richer today because those workers lost jobs because now money once paid them is put to better use. But we in the media almost never tell that story. It's partly because we can only report on what we easily see. And we can see and interview the people who get fired. We can take pictures as they leave their jobs on that last day when the factory closes. We hear about the hardship to their families. It's hard to tell the flip side of that story, the cool new jobs those workers may find. Because the exciting new products that they will produce and the new jobs, we can't see that yet. Sarah Squire tries to explain that to people. Uh, you go to different colleges and talk about creative destruction? Yeah, sometimes, and, and uh, we host conferences um, on those topics um, all around the country and all around the world with my foundation, yeah. Liberty Fund. Liberty Fund. And creative destruction is this phrase from the economist Joseph Schumpeter. Marx had said, capitalism is destruction. That's right. And Schumpeter was interested in noting that along with that destruction is the creativity that pushes capitalism and a capitalist system forward. One person who understood this issue long before most people was economist Frederick Bastiat. In France, more than 100 years ago, shopkeepers objected to food imports from outside France. These cheap imports are unfair competition, they said, and government should stop the imports. In response, Bastiat wrote a satire he titled The Candlemaker's Petition. It read, the manufacturers of candles, street lamps, and generally everything connected with lighting petition the government. We candle makers suffer from the unfair competition of a foreign rival. This foreign manufacturer of light has such an advantage over us that he floods our markets with his product. And he offers it at a fantastically low price. The moment this foreigner appears, all our customers desert us and turn to him. As a result, an entire domestic industry is rendered stagnant. This foreign manufacturer competes against us without mercy. Of course, the foreign manufacturer they're upset about is the sun. And today, it's who? Uh, it's the taxi drivers protesting against Uber and trying to shut Uber down. It's uh, the traditional hospitality industry protesting against Airbnb and trying to shut that, that down. They want protection. In Bastiat's essay, he went on to say, here's our petition, pass a law ordering the closing of all windows, skylights, shutters, curtains. We have served our country well. Gratitude demands that our country not abandon us to this unequal competition kind of what the taxi drivers and hotel industry say. Exactly. Uh, we've been here for long, it's wor for so long, it's working just fine the way that it's working. Why do we want to bring in all of this competition, right? And what jobs are gone that we maybe don't think about? Oh, jobs that have been creatively destroyed over the years. Um, telephone operators, uh, um, travel agents uh, who've mostly been re uh, replaced by online booking. We have a lot of grocery stores with automated checkouts now. We've got a lot of fast food restaurants that are using automated checkouts and, and order taking systems. No more ice deliveries anymore? Exactly. Elevator operators? Uh, no more coal guy uh, delivering coal down your coal chute in the morning. Um, now, it, gone, during, gone, gone. during the Industrial Revolution, some people came into the factories in England and destroyed them. That's right. These are the Luddites. Destroyed in, the machine. Yes, these are the Luddites in the 18th century, smashing the, the frames for, for weaving cloth and, and protesting that this sort of work needed to be done by hand to protect, uh, to protect their way of life and to protect their industry. We're biologically programmed to fear this change. We are. Um, change is scary. Risk is scary. Um, you know, when the caveman Og uh, is Og. happily situated in his little uh, cave with his family and he's able to gather enough food every day to take care of his family, even if there's a better hunting ground or foraging ground that's a couple of miles away, he might not move because he's got just enough 
for what he needs, that taking the risk of getting lost, getting eaten by a predator, maybe finding worse hunting, just isn't worth the risk, right? When you're living day to day, being risk averse makes a lot of sense. And today, they don't r resist it themselves. They hire lobbyists to manipulate politicians <laughs> to forbid the innovation. Exactly. Thank you, Sarah Squire. Now.